the top of the sixth, Robbie Ross Jr. returns. He deals one down low in the zone, taken for strike one. Galino has walked twice, once in the third and again in the fourth. Doubled up on the breaking ball, nicked the lower third of the zone down the middle. It's quickly nothing in two to Mike Galino. And now the pitch. Weak ground ball, poked to the right side. Phillips scoops it up and quickly turns it to first, one away. Here's Will Baker, the third baseman. He's dealt a first pitch strike up in the zone. No balls and a strike, 96 miles an hour. You can see the smoke coming off that one from up here in the press box. Ross comes set from the stretch with the one, two, swing and a miss, got him to chase on the outside with a heater, two gone. Ross drops the glove to his waist, kicks and fires the one, two, swing and a miss on an outside fastball and the side is retired. Three strikeouts now on the night for Robbie Ross Jr. Legends still up eight to four as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Back in down the middle for a called strike one to Lucas Owens. 93 on that fastball. That's a good way to say uh, welcome. Yeah, hello. Yeah, good evening here. That one's tipped away. The high slider it looked like. Robbie Ross shows three pitches, a fastball, slider, and a curveball. He added 14 and a third innings pitch this year. Gave up nine hits, six runs, three of which were earned. He's walked five batters and struck out a whopping 21 with an ERA of 188. 02. Ball strike two on the outer half. Now we can call that one. Good morning, good afternoon. The first pitch is taken for a strike. Called strike number two on a slider. Nothing in two, Ross deals to Pugh. Swing and a miss. And the lawnmower takes his first victim, one away. Coming in towards Cottom, he's got a pitch he likes. Love at the waist, he deals. Swing and a miss. Good looking slider there to retire A.J. Bumpus. 1-2, swing and a miss. Another strikeout there. Two in a row for Ross, this time dealt to Cesar Trejo, two gone. Now toes the rubber, comes set, fires, swing and a miss. On a breaker, down and away. Three swinging strikeouts in a row for Robbie Ross Jr. Anybody in this league that I've been impressed by it's probably Robbie Ross at the top of my list. Um, you know, he's just, he's, his velocity's up, his control has always been there, but the, the velocity uptick, 94 there to Galley Cribs. And uh, man, oh man, you gotta hope a major league team is watching this thinking that you can have a lefty like that in the middle or back into your bullpen. One of the interesting aspects I think for left-handers this year and going forward is, can you also get right-handers out because of the new minimum of the major league level where you're going to have to face three guys unless you end the inning? That's so true, Brett. Uh, the gone are the days of the loogie, the acronym, they, That's right. the left-handed only guys. And, yeah, I mean, that getting out right-handers is going to be imperative for lefties as, you know, baseball goes on here. The Randy Choates and the Javi Lopez's and stuff, there's still a market for them. But if you go left, right, left, you still need to be able to maybe get some of those right-handers out. Man, throwing a Javi Lopez there. That, that's my all-time loogie right there. He's one of those guys that yeah, so you bring him in and he's almost unhittable for a lefty. You might as well just <laughs> say your goodbyes and head back to the dugout. It's a good job, a good roll if you can obtain it. Those are some batting gloves that uh, Cribs has on. Roll it a second. Capable, and we'll see if he's able to retire Casey Clements. Clements will lace that one into the seats and ricochet around a few of the fans and kick back on the field of play. It's an absolute laser beam from Casey Clements, who's reached tonight with a single camera run to score back in the second inning. We're all knotted up here in the top of the seventh, and I'm still crossing my fingers for that home run derby, man. I want, I want to see that L screen get rolled out. <laughs> People flipping on their televisions around the country or the region. That might really throw them for a loop. Look at the bullpens for both these teams. And I mean, it's going to be tough to bring across a run. I mean, we've already seen two guys 
leave the yard. Tommy Joseph, as well as Kelly Dugan. But I mean, this especially this team, this Lightning's loss team, they have just a bevy of arms at their disposal in the bullpen. That one at 95, handled by Ross. Strikeout and a soft comeback. Yeah, their own kind of unique identity, but Greg's is really one of those things where the guys are just loose, man. They're so loose, ready to do whatever. Yeah, I can play second. <laughs> what else do you need me? That might be the sound bite of the year. I liked it. <laughs> can, can you play second? I will. <laughs> That's always the answer. Yes, sir. Counter Cable Bats. Are you right-handed? Yep. Okay. Well, you're going to second base this inning. <laughs> that's that's enough of that. Robbie Ross at 94 on the gun. I mean, think of the arms that come out tonight so far for this Lightning Sloss team. You've seen the starter Joe Whelan, big league experience. David Huff, one of the more established big leaguers in this entire league. Kevin McGowan, former major leaguer, and now you turn over to Robbie Ross, who, in his own right. Has six years of big league experience, a former second round pick of the Texas Rangers. That was right off the mask. Sullivan. It's a pro move by the home plate umpire right there, kind of coming out, giving Robbie Ross the ball and give uh, Brett Sullivan a chance to shake up the cobwebs. Here, this one, maybe. Ooh, right off, yeah, right off the front of the mask. He's took out a few of those tonight. He's, still, he's all right, though, and Robbie Ross, who, I mean, talk about a rookie season, Brett. As a rookie in 2012 with the Rangers, 6-0, a 2-22 ERA, 58 games. Super pumped up. He's good friends with Joe Whelan, the starter tonight as well. It's Braxton Davidson hacking on the first pitch. It's funny how every pitcher that comes in or that pitch in the major leagues knows Robbie Ross. He's like the he's like the mayor. Everyone everyone knows him. You've had a conversation with him, and they only speak highly of him. A simple delivery. 95 on the yeah, on the so radar. Quick between pitches. Once he gets in contact with the rubber, come set. He's ready to go. And uh, a couple lefties tonight. Ian Clarkin hit 95 for Team Texas, and now Robbie Ross touching 95 for the Lightning slots. We've had the velo tonight. 95 again. Strike call. Yeah, again. You hear the pop of the glove. And you're not being mistaken there. That ball is coming in there hot. It's firm. Davidson's 0 for 2. Davidson's 0 for 3. Oh, no. Never asked him about that before, but I'm interested. Well, I'll have what to. What are you waiting on? I know. I, I, I'm just looking at his baseball reference page right now, and I'm, I feel remiss that I've never asked him about that before. That is a miss. That's a swing and a miss on your part. <laughs> Robbie Ross, though, man, I, I got to tell you. Uh, he was here in Sugarland last year and spent a little bit of time with the Skeeters. One of the nicer guys and one of the more energetic guys. When you go away from a conversation with him, I, I don't know if I've said it on a past broadcast, it's like having a cup of coffee just by talking to him. And, you know, such a joy to have around. And, I mean, the, the best part, 94 on the fastball there, man. You see it. He is really, really, really pumping it. Easy, too. I don't see three or four coffee cups in front of you today, unlike previous <laughs> telecasts. Yeah, you know, I, I brought my own energy today. I didn't, didn't need the coffee, even if as we get into you know, the wee hours of the, of the night here. But no, man, I, I've enjoyed calling these games with you, Brett. It's been one of the pleasures of my life. One more coming up Thursday, another 7 o'clock telecast. And uh, looking forward to that. Mother Nature might stir up some trouble for us later on this week, so let's get that game in Thursday. Put your wish list in now. Rodney pitching, no rain, maybe a home run derby. If I think of anything else, I'll, I'll text you in the meantime. Man, on Sunday night, I was running into the control room. You know, there was a, a late home run uh, for one of the teams that gave them a one-run lead. And, you know, unfortunately, the relief pitcher that came in the next inning fell apart a little bit. Pass ball scores the tie and run. And, you know, you'll never see that in the control room for a major league baseball or minor league team where guys are fist pumping for extra. He has kind of been the bullpen catcher for this team, Texas, so far. A guy who played a, a bit at the University of Texas. And going to get in that bat here in a 12 nothing kind of a, a lopsided game. Hoping to get an A-B, and he gets that hook against Robbie Ross, who can throw mid-90s. This is a guy, you know, Kobe Clemens, you see him there. They they said, this guy is in Navy SEAL-like shape. So, he, you know, they, he can come and catch bullpens on an instant. 
heard he took he used to be a guy that took some legendary batting practice as well at the University of Texas and uh, it's pretty cool you know good wherewithal to get him in that bat here in a lopsided game another Memorial High School product first career at bat against Texas came at LSU thanks for playing took a big rip and a miss there with a pained expression on that swing played at the University of Houston and then Blinn College to Pampas. 93 there. That's a tough pitch to catch up for your first at bat of the year. One more MPH, 94 in the gun. Hang with him, George. Yeah, and I mean, I don't know if Robbie's going to show him a little mercy and maybe throw him another fastball or if he's just going to decide to go back to that changeup he's already got one strikeout with so far in this inning. Rip it a miss. And he goes.